Good afternoon. I guess everybody's hungry, no? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll make it quick. A lot of people have been talking about uh, environment, air pollution, water pollution, and others. So maybe we can get down to some numbers. Um, I will talk about SDG 3, 7, 11 in relation to air pollution. SDGs 12 and 15 in relation to waste management and the sustainability of the ecosystem. Why air pollution? Because air pollution takes the lives of 4 million people yearly. This is reported by WHO in 2016. And also, this report says that over or around 90% of the people live in cities with bad air. Of course, Lebanon is no exception. We have an average PM 2.5, that is particles in the air, that exceed the WHO recommendation by three times at least. What are the sources of these pollutions? We have traffic, but every other city has traffic. So that's not the main problem. The main problem is it, it is that we have an old traffic, old car fleet. The average car fleet year, in our case, is 19 years of age. It's very old, and it's increasing at a rate of 0.66 per year. This means that we have no regulations or no, or no programs to take the old cars off the street. And this increases emission because we're running with old technology. And the regulation is not ready to do anything about it. The second major source of pollution is that we have power plants. We need those power plants. But those power plants are very ill-maintained. They emit lots of carcinogens in the air and the maintenance has been really, really poor on them. We, you know, we have a problem of electricity. And the way we solve this problem is by creating micro businesses of diesel generators. Our studies show that for every two buildings in Beirut, there is one generator. So the red dots that you see on this map are the number of generators that you see in Beirut. We did a survey and we counted the number of generators in an area in Hamra and we extrapolated the density that we are, were able to determine to the whole Beirut. This means that the emission from these diesel generators that are not regulated is very, very high. And this puts a huge burden on the health and on the air pollution of our city. One more thing. We have a law, Law 174, that bans smoking indoors, but this law is not implemented, and there is no regulation that is implemented for this. And when you go to a cafe, you get out full of smoke from your hair to the bottom of your shoes. What we measured, gram for gram, we took particles from Los Angeles, and we took the same particles in Beirut, and we found that the number of carcinogens that are in the particles are up to seven times higher in Beirut than they are in Los Angeles, and we're comparing gram for gram. Why? Because we wanted to compare the particles in a regulated environment versus a particles in non-regulated environment. And it was very shocking to us. The consequences of this has been detrimental. We lead at a very young age in cancer, in breast cancer, in prostate cancer, and in Hodgkin cancer uh, for, you know, in the children. And this is expected to keep rising. And the worst is that we see those cases at a much earlier age 
than what people see outside Lebanon. Meaning that a woman in Lebanon is prone to have cancer at 40 years of age, whereas the average of cancer in women outside Lebanon is 50. Okay, we have unregulated traffic. We have unregulated diesel generators. We have poorly maintained power plants. And we have no regulations for indoor smoking. Do you think that's it? Have we hit bottom? Not yet. The worst is yet to come. They want to include incinerators and backed up by a lot of other organizations that are not local. Why incinerators? Are they going to increase air pollution? Considering this unregulated environment, we have to bear in mind that we have not been able to ban one law that is so small that is banning smoking argili inside a room. And now we want to bring incinerators. Let me tell you a little bit about incinerators. Agent Orange is the chemical that the US government used in their war against Vietnam. 55 years later, the kids were still born with birth defects. The agent that they used, this Agent Orange, is dioxin. These are the pictures, sorry, the pictures of the kids 55 years later in, in, in Vietnam. Dioxin is not a myth. Even the European Commission showed that waste incineration is a source of dioxins. So we're not making it up, right? But they say, you know, they are using them in Europe. in Europe. Yes, they are using them in Europe. We're not debating the technology. The technology is good in Europe because there is the government, the local government, that is controlling emission. And there is another layer of control that is the EU Commission, two layers of control. And they say still that EU, if you look here, I'm not sure if this laser is working, but if you look at the pink area and the first line, they say dioxins are emitted from waste. Yes, we will filter them. We will not let them go outside, definitely. So this is how the filter would look like when we buy it in you. And after we use it, this is how it's going to be, right? And plus, on top of this, we have the ashes that come from burning. You all have chimneys at home, and every time you burn your log, there are some ashes that are left over. You know how much there are ashes when we burn in incinerators? This 25% according to EPA. This is not an easy, a, a, a negligent, um, uh, a small amount. And on top of this, those ashes are concentrated with dioxins. Well, the specification reports that we read for incinerators do not say what they will do with the ashes. Okay, they do not show what we will do with the ashes. Where do we put them? How do we handle them? Are we ready to do this? Plus, the biggest myth now is that they want to produce energy from, from the waste. We have money. We want to produce energy from the waste. We don't want to fix the power plants, but we want to produce energy from the waste. Okay, in order to produce energy from the waste, we need a minimum of 8,400 kilojoules per gram. Our waste is all organic or at least 50% organic. If we burn ches, you know, lettuce, watery lettuce, it's not gonna form 8,400 kilojoules per kilogram, right? It will only, at its best, form 6,500 kilojoules per kilogram. 
there is a deficit of 2,000 kilojoules per, per kilogram that they will need to add fuel to in order for them to reach this value. So we need to pay more fuel to get to form energy. If we take the example of Beirut with all the waste that is generated, this means that Beirut has to pay an extra $11.7 million to get to have energy. I think it will be much easier and makes probably more sense to fix the power plants that we have. And a lot of talk has been going on since morning about the youth, the young generation, and how we are promoting innovation. If we're burning our resources, how could we ask the youth to innovate? Why do we want to keep them in this dirty environment? They're not going to stay. All of this effort is not going to help. I'm a teacher, and I know that 90% of our graduates are not in Lebanon. And we're not making it easier for them to stay. I'm sorry I get passionate about this, because every year we see them leaving. And if I can ask... And if I only ask by show of hands, who has his son or daughter outside Lebanon? Thank you. Thank you. Right. Please say no for incinerators. We don't want to die here. Please say yes, we want to do sustainable. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm getting too much. We do not want the diesel generators. We want to do sustainable consumption and production. We want our kids to stay here. We want the money to be used wisely. I want to thank a lot of people. But because of this context today, I want to thank especially Bank Audi, who never saved any opportunity to help me whenever I asked. Thank you.